that is what my Russian friends were asking me when I told them how many millions I would be pouring into my education in Cambridge. You see, in Russia, the state provides everything. Healthcare, kindergarten, primary school, high school, and one undergraduate degree. Yes, there are private organizations where you can pay, but you can potentially get by without paying a penny. Moreover, if you're a good student, the government will actually give you a credit card and put money on there. Also, if you're coming from another city, you will be given accommodation. Now, back to Cambridge. Although UK student debt is not as high as in the US, I still knew that my three-year bachelor would cost me quite a lot. But just how much? Let's dive into calculations. Well, at some unis, you just pay university fees. So let's Google what it's like for Imperial, UCL or Warwick. Cambridge is different. It is based on collegiate system. So once you get in, you're associated with one of the 31 colleges. It is the place where you live and eat, but for lectures, everyone comes together to the same place. So fees are normally broken into university fees and college fees. Now a disclaimer, I will only talk about non-EU university fees because for UK or European Union, it is mostly the same. It is 9,250 pounds per year. And then there are some means tested grants that I still don't really understand how they work. Basically, if you're from the European Union you get as many opportunities almost as British students for now you're paying the same amount there are a lot of grants and sometimes the governments even support your decision to go and study abroad so I will be speaking from a non-EU student perspective and that might be also applicable to American students for example so as I said you pay university fees and college fees the former is set and you can look it up online it depends on the subject everything is broken into five levels and as you can see the cheapest degrees are languages philosophy theology and history. That makes sense, they require very little equipment and the most expensive is medicine. That is pretty sad because um, their undergrad is six years so overall they pay a fortune. Computer science as you can see is also quite high up, it's level four. When I got into Cambridge in October 2015 this number was just 23,000. The university then gives you a promise it will not increase the fees by more than five percent a year. So what they do is they increase it by 4.999%. So in 2016 I paid around 24,000, in 2017 I will pay around 25,000. Someone starting the same course as me in 2018 will pay 29,000. So that was university fees. College fees depend on the college, of course, not on the subject. They can be anything from six to 12,000 a year, and I'm very happy to say that King's is in the lower half of the um, table. They have the same 5% promise, and my fees have increased throughout the years as well. Now to the fun part. I actually have no clue where this money goes because college fees don't actually contribute to my costs in accommodation or food, even though you think that's what the college is for. No, officially, they're going to providing a range of educational, domestic and pastoral services and support. University fees and college fees together make up tuition fees that you absolutely have to pay. Before you start your course, the university asks you to provide financial guarantee. This means that before you even start your course, in your bank account, you should have enough money for the next three years of your education. But not only do they want this number three times, they also have what they call living expenses. They estimate it at around 10,000 a year. And of course, this number grows with 5% increase every year as well. Overall, they kind of want to see this number. Is your head going crazy yet? So let's break down the 10,000 because I honestly don't think that I'm spending 10,000. So the most important one is of course accommodation. In Kings you have six different bands and I'm somewhere in the middle. So that is approximately 3,700 a year. You of course can have different contracts, long or short. If it's long, you can leave your stuff and stay in your room over vacation. I prefer to pack and pay less because every time there is a break, I go back to Russia. Then of course food. What we have are EPOS cards, meaning every time we go to cafeteria, we swipe our card and then at the end of term, we get a bill. This will largely depend on a student. I sometimes end up spending around 100 per term, uh, but of course then I go to Sainsbury's and buy some more food. So let's say it's around a thousand per year. For me as an international, of course, a huge amount of money goes into flights and buses and various transportation costs. So we have three terms, that's around six flights. I would estimate it at around 900 a year. Bike is a necessity as I think in Cambridge for me. It's a one-off purchase, so that's good. And I bought it for 45 pounds. You don't need to buy books, that is the difference with Americans and that is amazing. Your libraries will be full of stuff that you need. Our gym is 30 pounds a year. Societies, um, depends. If it's college level, they are free. So that's where I tend to go. 
if you want to get involved in more professional stuff, you do have to pay membership fees. I honestly don't know, let's say 100 a year. Storage over the breaks is very important. Kings provides it for free. Uh, they give a bit more space to internationals, which is good, but not all colleges do that. So you, you should check before applying. Laundry money, I um, have no clue. Let's estimate at around 50 per year. And clothes, um, again, I don't buy anything in Cambridge like that. I think in Russia it's much cheaper. Let's say 100 pounds per year. Drinks, this is where I'm very lucky because I don't drink alcohol and don't go to clubs, but I heard it's pretty expensive. Same goes to formal halls, so dinners where you can eat and be served and wear a gown and everything, they're quite expensive. Let's combine these two and say 200 per year. Mabel's, at the end of each year, we have those huge parties that cost quite a lot and some people go to none, some people go to three. Let's say an average person goes to one and it would cost him or her 150 pounds. Okay, so now we have a total. I know I definitely didn't include everything. Some people like to go to London and that would be additional 20 pounds per ticket. Some people, a lot of people, like to order from Amazon. You, you see those packages in Porter's Lodge all the time. So that will definitely cost a lot. If you want to mail something by post to your parents, some people like to go to cinemas, bowling, clubs, maybe varsity skiing trip. There are also things like college insurance and medical insurance and so on. As you can see, I tried to cut down my cost as much as I could, but this is the bare minimum that you have to have. In my honest opinion, that is too much for a university like Cambridge. I could have easily paid 30,000 to a private tutor who would be sitting right next to me and correcting every single line of my code. But then of course I wouldn't get this magical certificate that will probably get me into a lot of places. Cambridge puts a lot of emphasis on self-studying, so you'd think that you could do it all on your own and the only thing it does is provides a lot of pressure but then of course you're surrounded by those brilliant individuals so you have to decide for yourself whether the money that you're paying are worth it i think cambridge reputation is what allows it to increase fees like that okay i hope this video has been educational for you guys i'd be curious to know how fees are working out for you if you're in university right now look at that cloud now, a disclaimer, I will... Hi! Hello! German children! You are so cute! Ja, ich will mich auch draufsetzen, klappt aber nicht! They just all want to be my vlog, I know it!